Thanks very much indeed. Um, thank you for the invitation uh, to come uh, to UL. I mean, there are three announcements uh, today, three important announcements, and UL is in all of them. So the first is that we announced this morning um, a uh, funding under our spokes program to SSPC, uh, which is one of the uh, two SFI-supported centres here at UL. Um, that's 1.5 million, a million from Science Foundation Ireland, roughly, and roughly half a million uh, from most of the major pharmaceutical companies in Ireland. And a big thank you to those companies, uh, focused on how to um, make proteins more stable and how to make molecules in a more bespoke fashion using more disposable uh, kind of uh, manufacturing, which will be required in the future. So l linking up with NIBR, that's real impact, okay? That's about things that are important uh, for industry. Then the second announcement today is Science Week. And I was on the radio this morning and I said, if you want to go to Limerick, you can grow a crystal. That's the big thing about Science Week in, in, in Limerick, growing crystals. And it's not a coincidence that there's, uh, somebody's gonna put my slides on, brilliant. Uh, uh, it's not a coincidence that SSPC is here um, and kids love to grow crystals and that tells them, oh, you go ahead. That tells them all about um, uh, science and all about the importance of science for the pharmaceutical industry. And then the third announcement is obviously this about uh, impact, uh, which is really uh, good. So here you see a kind of connection, a connection between uh, uh, outreach to children, uh, deep industrial engagement, and real cutting edge science uh, in uh, crystal understanding, crystallization, co-crystallization, and so on. So now what I want to do is talk about impact. And I'll start by giving a definition of impact. So here are a couple of definitions of impact. It's a demonstrable contribution that excellent research makes to society or the economy, or the direct and indirect influence of research which affect an individual or community development of policy, creation of a product, service, or technology. So that's a kind of definition of impact as used by various people around the world. And the first thing to say is that there are various time scales to impact. There's short-term impact, there's medium-term impact, and there's long-term impact. And all three are important to us. We are interested in things that are here uh, and in the next year or two. We're interested in things that are here in the next five years. And we're also interested in things for the next 20 years. 20 years is only five four-year cycles. Four years is a typical time for a PhD student. It's a typical grant uh, cycle. So we need to take a 20-year view. And you need to be looking at all of those three things, in my opinion, short, medium, and long term, uh, to be impactful. Now, there is a difference between output and impact. And I want to uh, stress that. An output is things that are conventionally measured in academia, published papers, conference proceedings, books, patents, software, and so on. Uh, you can read that up there. That is essentially an output, but it is not an impact. An impact is something different. So for example, if you were to look at an economic impact and you were to take the example of patents, impact is a patent exploited. Filing a patent is part, as an output, is part of the journey towards impact but a filed patent application is not creating impact unless it's exploited by being licensed or being in a spin-out company or what have you. Other examples of economic uh, impact, improved or new business processes, products or services. Very important. Very important when business is choosing what business, if you're a multinational, to expand or contract in various uh, countries. Something unique, particularly some connection with the research base. And I know there are good examples here in UL ranging from aluminium all the way through to uh, pharmaceutical industry. Company creation, increased performance or profit. It's nothing to be ashamed of. Making more money is actually very important for a company. And uh, creating jobs, also, also very important, particularly for governments and for society. If you take a health impact, here are some health impacts. Improved patients or public health outcomes, raised public awareness of a health risk or benefit, reduced cost of treatment, improved quality of life. And when I talk about health care, I'm talking about human health care, but I'm also talking about animal health care in the veterinary field, which uh, is, of course, about 50% of the agricultural industry. So these are impacts. So the question is, as a funding agency, how would you assess impact? And Science Foundation Ireland has taken a leading international role in this, and I can say that objectively because there are now several countries around the world, New Zealand, uh, Denmark, parts of the EU, which are actually copying what we do in Ireland. And I think that's really important. As a small country, you have to learn from other people, but you also have to lead. You have to show some leadership, uh, and the best form of leadership is when other people copy what you do. 
So what we have uh, asked people to do is to uh, write on their grant application an impact statement. And this impact statement needs to be specific, comprehensive, and realistic, and answer two important questions. Who will benefit from the research, and how will they benefit from the research? So this is not a bunch of waffle, okay? This is not writing an impact statement that says we're going to cure cancer or whatever. It's about saying specifically what your research will do and how people um, will benefit from it. What then happens when we peer review the grant applications is something unique to Ireland. As I said before, it is now being copied. And we use scientific peer review to assess the scientific parts of the proposal. So the science part of the proposal is reviewed by international peers, leading people in their field. We use absolutely nobody from Ireland. So there can be no question either real or imagined of bias or uh, anything like that. We only use international experts. Another really important uh, comment, excellence in Ireland is distributed. There are four and a half million people, there are seven universities, there are 14 institutes of technology. You will find patches of excellence everywhere. In our research centers, we try to link up these patches of excellence, and they are reviewed by people from the world's top universities. So SSPC, Lero, and all of the other 12 centers that we reviewed were reviewed by people from Harvard, Yale, MIT, Oxford, Cambridge, blah, blah, blah. So you're not just in the top 100, you're in the top one or two in the world. It just goes under the badge name of a research center. So scientific excellence is absolutely required, and that is done by international peer review. There's nothing unique about that. That's what people do around the world. But what is unique about what we do is once you have been deemed to be scientifically excellent, which is typically less than 10% of all of the applications we receive, then instead of funding you because you scored 98%, but not you because you scored 94%, we don't do that. We then put everybody in a level playing field and say, you are now all scientifically excellent. And what we will now do is convene an international impact panel. On that international impact panel are R&D directors from companies, venture capitalists, uh, investors in high-tech businesses, heads of translational research institutes, heads of public policy research institutes. There is not one single academic on that panel. They are all people whose job it is to look at a research proposal and say whether it's got legs. That's what an R&D director does in a company. They make choices about whether the research is likely to progress or not, what the competition looks like. Did they see something in Singapore that looked similar? Did they see something in Denmark that looked similar, more advanced, or what have you? And those people are actually very, imag uh, very imaginative. The academic community uh, often fear, in inverted commas, the impact panel. I can tell you peer review is a very conservative process. The impact panel is far more visionary than the panel of academics. They're far more interested in short, medium, and long-term uh, outputs, and they're far more interested in what I'm interested in, which is unique selling point for that research group. Why would you fund that group in Ireland? What gives us a unique selling point? So the impact panel then look at all of these scientifically excellent proposals and they rank them in order of impact. So you could be scientifically excellent and you could be top of the list and you could not be funded because you are not impactful. So impact is very real for the scientific uh, applicant to SFI because whilst excellence is absolutely required, it is not sufficient to get funded. You must also be impactful. So it is actually more difficult to get research funding from Science Foundation Ireland than it is equivalent uh, bodies in either the UK or the US, and I am not ashamed of that. I actually think this is a really good thing to do. I think it's really important to take this seriously and not to fund research that isn't excellent. You have to have excellent research, but you also have to have impactful research. Okay, so that's how you assess it at the application uh, stage. What about when the project finishes? Well, the first thing is I told you that impact is short, medium, and long term. We have put in place uh, through an IT system called Sesame and uh, through requiring everyone to register for an international number under the ORCID system, a system where we will track you for the rest of your life. So if you get a grant from Science Foundation Ireland and you ever come back to get a future grant, doesn't matter if you leave the country and come back in 20 or 30 years' time, we will find you, and you will have to write a report on what that previous grant did. Because one of the uh, 
joker cards that's often played by uh, science funding agencies is they say it's, it takes a long term to, time to get impact. We assess the project at the end of three or five years, therefore we don't know what the long term impact is. We ain't doing that. We want to look at the long term impact as well as the medium and short term impact and that requires a kind of lifetime impact statement uh, on uh, the Sesame system. And what we ask people to do is to tell us what they've done. So, metrics like patents exploited. That's an impact measure. Patent filed is an output. Patent exploited is an impact measure. Industry downloads of publications. I can tell you what companies around the world are reading research from Ireland. It's a pretty good sign if somebody reads your paper. If they haven't read your paper, it probably means that they don't know about it. So that's an impact measure. Employment destination of researchers. Here's another impact measure, Re repeat industrial collaboration of increasing financial magnitude. If you have a company collaborating on your research program and they give you 200,000 euros this year and in three years time they come back and give you a million euros, I probably don't need to read the proposal. Somebody somewhere has had a good experience, they've come back for more and they've upped the ante. That's an impact measure. And you're beginning to see that in some of our research centers, companies that have put in typically two or three hundred thousand euros are now putting in three or five million euros. When I ran a company, I would never, ever give anybody a big grant to start with. Nobody would. You give them a small grant, see how you get on, if you can work well with them, if they're producing the goods, if the people are user friendly, if they're producing what you want, then you up the ante. So that's a kind of uh, impact measure. We also assess people against their original statement, so if you write something very ambitious to get funded, you also have to deliver. Um, and so that's important when you write the statements, important about you know, where your graduates may go, what links you have with industry and so on. Those kind of things are more important than the specifics of the particular proposal. What we then also do is we allow people to uh, select against a number of statements which they have to say. So for example, the research conducted through my award has resulted in a start or expansion of the company which has resulted in creative high value jobs. And if you tick that box, you have to justify it. There is also a statement that says, my research has not yet created any impact. And that's okay too, if it's a long term impact. But when you apply subsequently, we'll want to know about that because there is a difference between long term impact and no impact. And uh, we are keen to look at that. And then the last, which is number four, is we are going to, as we have done with the um, uh, statements and the uh, international panel of uh, impact reviewers, uh, experiment with a well-known statistical technique for putting quantitative numbers and qualitative uh, data, which your president will know about, uh, which are visual analog scales. This is how you measure pain, it's how you measure happiness, it's how you measure depression, it's how you measure all of those quantitative things, typically on a Likert or visual analog scale, uh, one to a hundred, you make a mark on the line. And we will have an international panel take into account all of the criteria, so the objective metrics, the case studies, where the people's employment went, and they will make a statement on a 100-point on a scale as to where they think that is in terms of impact. This will be an experiment. I don't think anyone around the world has done this, but it is an attempt to put a single number on uh, what is a diverse group of qualitative and important qualitative measures. And then finally, my last slide is that there are different sorts of impact. So if you look at the vertical pillar, these are places in society where scientific research can impact. Into the economy, which is front and central, into health, into natural capital and built environment, into policy services and regulation, future capacity and skills, uh, society and international. And then if you look across the horizontal bars, there are kind of two really uh, overarching objectives. One of them is preparedness or defensive research, basically increasing resilience, sometimes called basic research by people. So this is where you need to have some capacity to do something. For example, if you were to ask people in Ireland at the present time, is economic impact more important than environmental impact, they would probably say yes, and that's quite appropriate at our uh, particular point in history. But if there was a major spill from an oil tanker off the west coast of Ireland tomorrow, I bet you those two positions would reverse. I bet you if there was 200 tons of crude oil washing up on Irish shores, all of a sudden environmental impact would become important. So it is important to have these kind of uh, resilience or defensive uh, um, actions. And then there's the clear impact of improving efficiency and efficacy of existing practice, uh, which I've talked about before. 
And there's another very interesting aspect of impact, and that is to ask taxpayers what they want their money spent on for research. And there are two interesting experiments which SFI have been looking at. One is the Danish experiment called InnoPlus, and the second is the New Zealand experiment, where they went out to ask the public in general, across industry, across the general public, across charities, a big, big, big sector. And the objective of that in Denmark was to actually raise the political awareness of research. But what they asked them was, what projects would you like to see your research money spent on? And the most interesting finding is from New Zealand, because the number one research topic for the New Zealand public was not on anybody's list. It was not on the list of the Royal Society from New Zealand. It was not on the list of any government uh, department. It was not on the list of any science funder in New Zealand. It was on no experts list. And it was by far and away the number one thing the public wanted research on. And that turned out to be research on housing. And that's not surprising because there'd been an earthquake in Wellington which had destroyed large numbers of people's homes and the public were interested in rebuilding a house that wasn't going to come down in an earthquake. And they were also interested in having insulated so that they could save money. It wasn't on any experts list, not academic, not government, not anything. So there is some wisdom in the crowd um, uh, and that is it's often a good idea to ask people and we will be uh, running out at least a pilot experiment to do that uh, in Ireland, uh, I call it currently the uh, Crowd Book of Irish uh, Research Ideas, but we'll see what we call it uh, eventually. Because I think it's important to ask people, and actually, they're quite insightful. And actually, it's quite important politically. And, you know, my um, hallmark of uh, impact and outreach will be when people in Ireland enthusiastically discuss scientific research as enthusiastically as they discuss sport that will be a uh, major outcome. And my second outcome, uh, to pick a ministerial example, will be when there is a crisis in some kind of government or semi-government utility, like there is at the moment, if somebody interrupts a press conference when there's a crisis in the future to report some breaking science, that's when you'll know you have impact. And we've a wee way to go. Thank you very much indeed. <laughs>